Hello, dear ones. Hello, family. You're at home. You're at home with Jim and Joy, and we want to hear from you. Give us a call, 205-271-2980 or 800-221-2980. 9460 or email us Jim and Joy at EWTN.com. Your family, we want you to be a part of the conversation this day. Enjoy. We're continuing to bask in the glow of the Holy Father's visit to the Americas, Cuba, the United States, Washington, New York, Philadelphia. How great was that time? It was a wonderful time, and EWTN did outstanding coverage, and I just want to thank you all for bringing it, because if you weren't supporting EWTN, we couldn't carry forth this great, great mission, and we just want to continue to pray for everyone as they travel back, um, everyone who labored so hard in all of those areas. But what I, even Sunday, as the Pope was boarding the plane everything, I was I felt sad that he, my heart was hurting that he was leaving our country. I loved having him here. Absolutely. And um, I loved everything that he said. I loved what he did. He really, uh, the things that, I loved him having dinner with all the homeless and poor people. I loved him going to the jails. I loved, you know, that penitentiary that he went to and, and visited with all the prisoners. Shook the hands of each one of them. So yeah. many acts of love that he did. And he exemplified mercy in action. I mean, he, he just brought mercy, and it was so beautiful. I loved, I think one of the highlights for me um, was when he went to the seminary, yeah. um, and yeah. all of the seminarians were st standing there, and they were waiting for the Pope to come, and it was the future of the church, and all those young, vibrant yeah. men of God. Um, it was, that was so beautiful. It was great. And it was really encouraging. And I just, uh, I loved it. I loved the whole event. I had it on my app, like I asked you to do. Had it, ha took it with me at work. EWTN in the car. app. EWTN yeah. app. And EWTN literally was everywhere these past yeah. couple of days. Yeah. I was thinking, you know, what can I share about the time that he came? And I was thinking, for me, it was like in Alabama, we have these, the cicada or the cicadae, many of them, these insects that make this incredible buzzing sound. When they're going off, you can't hear a thing. Mm -hmm. And that's like the world. It's like TV. It's like this cacophony of just sound and you can't think. But when you clap your hands, the cicadas stop. Mm -hmm. They stop and it's quiet. And it seemed like for several days, the Holy Spirit clapped his hands. Mm. And the Holy Father came among us with that face of love and incarnated love. Mm -hmm. And he entered into this incredible dialogue and encounter at, at the UN or at the Congress, uh, in the prison, wherever he went. In Cuba. And whether you agreed with his message or not, I, I don't think you can get away from that love that, that he was saying, I want to encounter you as a human being, as a person with respect. Yes. And that he blessed with God's divine affirming love, every human being. So it was like all that noise stopped for a little while. I think people were stopping watching EW10, even some of the secular uh, networks and so on were covering things. And it was a real opportunity. And I pray that we would not let it pass by those in the church, especially those lapsed Catholics, that we would come back, mm -hmm. that we would take up the mission of the Holy Father to extend mercy, to look for the face of Christ in every human being, to enter into genuine dialogue with every person, whoever they might be without compromising our Catholic morals and, and our faith and share mm -hmm. with respect with every human being. Well, one of the priests on Catholic radio this morning with Teresa Tamio had said, the Holy Father coming was just the tonic that America needed. And when you think about that, we did. We needed the medicine. We needed the witness. Yeah. We needed to say, Holy Father, how do we do this? And he showed us. Yeah. This is how you do this. You go, you proclaim the truth. You, you echo the teachings of the church. I loved all the beauty of everything. Yeah. It made me even more proud to be Catholic, and I'm a convert, more proud to be a Christian, and now I want to go and tell and proclaim and do more. Speak about 40 Days for Life. Well, as you all know, 40 Days for Life is happening right now. It started September 23rd, and it will go till November 1st, 40daysforlife.com. What is it? It's a public witness outside Planned Parenthood abortion mills all over this country and the world bringing life, 
truth and the witness of the encounter. Yes, with all the campaigns they've had thus far, there's over 10,000, over 10,000 lives we believe that have been saved. People going in, women going in for abortions that have changed their minds, that have come out. So we invite you all to go to 40daysforlife.com. Uh, you can pray right where you are. You can fast or you can come right out to one of the sites. Go to the website. But we're ready for a break at this point. We're going to be speaking with Dr. Uh, Monica Miliorino Miller, one of the greatest pro-life witnesses in the history of the pro-life movement. You're not going to want to miss this time. Please don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Well, you are at home with Jim and Joy, and we are so happy that you have joined us. Today, we do have a pro-life legend among yeah. us. Her name is Dr. Monica <laughs> Millerino Miller, and she heads up Citizens for a Pro-Life Society. She's a wife. She's a mother. She's an author and a speaker. She married 26 years to her beloved husband, Edmund, who shall tell you, we're going to hear that great story, how they met with a beautiful courtship. And um, so he, she's with us today. She's also a professor, and she teaches theology at Madonna University. And so, um, Monica, we want to welcome yeah, you right. to At right. Home Honor with Jim and Joy. You. Well, what, one of the things I want you to tell our viewers at home we want to hear about beautiful Dr. Monica Miller <laughs> and how did you get involved and why did you get involved in the pro-life movement? Well, let's see, I was born. Mm -hmm. Oh, you want to start there? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I got involved pretty, pr when I was actually pretty young. Um, I had just graduated from Southern Illinois University, which I have to say is like one of the most godless places on the planet. Um, but I had had a very profound religious conversion when I was 21. And I went on a retreat during uh, Holy Week in 1976 at the Newman Center that was connected to Southern Illinois University. And at the retreat, I met a woman named Shirley Parks. And she changed my life. Um, she was involved in something called the pro-life movement. Mm -hmm. Now, I hadn't even heard of such a thing. Mm -hmm. um, and this is three years after Roe v. Wade, but I guess I was, you know, doing my own thing. And pro-life movement, what is a pro-life movement, right? Wow. So I, I uh, started to pal around with, with Shirley, and she introduced me to various <laughs> pro-life uh, organizations. I went to pro-life meetings. I was really getting my feet wet. She gave me really good books to read. I mean, I cut my teeth on Wilkie's Handbook on Abortion mm -hmm. and uh, Hilger's and Horan, uh, Abortion and Social Justice, mm -hmm. which was actually written in 1972, was published in 72 mm -hmm. in anticipation, yeah. right? right. Mm -hmm. So this opened up a whole new world for me. And I, I just, I was grabbed. And it's been full speed ahead ever since. And then when I moved, I, I moved to Chicago to study theology. At, at Loyola, mm -hmm. and I was by then maybe 23, 24, and a woman at my parish, St. Ignatius Parish, Marcita Hecht, um, said, Monica, why don't we go to a pro-life meeting? I says, okay, fine. So she takes me down to downtown Chicago mm -hmm. at, the, at uh, the headquarters of the Illinois Right to Life Committee, and this was in 1978, mm -hmm. and I met Joe Scheidler, that day. Lately. Your life was ruined. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. Joe is almost single-handedly responsible for my life of crime. Yeah. Yes. Um, he was planning a sit-in. That was what the meeting was about. I had no idea. I had a pro-life meeting, right? right. Um, and it was a meeting to plan a sit-in at the Concord Medical Services in downtown Chicago. And so when time came to, well, we, we really can't do this unless there are people willing to risk getting arrested. Um, 
I yeah. raise my hand. I'm, I'm, I'm in. Um, well, you know, what excuses did I it's have? It's kind of Baptist-like, isn't it? Raise your hand if you're going to rescue. Right, right. Raise, raise your hand if you want to get arrested. Well, I didn't want to get arrested, but I was willing to risk it. And um, so we did the first uh, rescue. We didn't even call them rescues that back in that day. Sit in at the Concord Medical Services. And uh, that would have been March 11th, 1978. I was 24 years old. Wow. And then soon, about a year, year later, I founded my own pro-life group, mm -hmm. uh, Citizens for a Pro-Life Society, while I was a graduate student at Loyola. Mm -hmm. And I, I did a number of other uh, sit-ins in Chicago, and then in, um, transferred everything over to Milwaukee in 1985, when I started to, to uh, study for my PhD at Marquette. Mm -hmm. um, so when, and when I got to Milwaukee, it, it was, well, Milwaukee was sort of like looking for a leadership. They were, they were sort of the sheep without a shepherd. And they, and they thought, well, Monica's in town, okay. So and, you raise your <laughs> hand again. <laughs> so we, or we got a bunch of people together in the living room of, uh, of, a, of a Lutheran uh, woman, Sandy Schultz. I talk about her, I talk about all this, of course, in my book. But um, so in the living room of Sandy Schultz in her, in her Milwaukee bungalow, to plan the first rescue to take place in the city of Milwaukee wow. since 1973, since Roe v. Wade. And the morning of the rescue, we were all rendezvousing at the Burger King, which was like three or four doors down from the clinic. Mm -hmm. And there was a fella who had showed up, um, kind of a nice looking young, young guy <laughs> with glasses. He looked really intelligent. And that was Edmund, Edmund Miller. And uh, I, that was the first time I'd met him, and he was there. He he had been recruited by somebody else who was involved with the rescue, and and he said the thing about Edmund is he said I came to the Burger King just to kind of size you folks up. <laughs> I, I, wanted, I I wasn't sure if you were a bunch of communists, uh, socialists. I, I didn't know where you were coming from yeah. politically or whatever. And um, the irony is that he and I went into the abortion clinic kind of hand in hand. Um, and we blocked the doors together, and we were arrested together. Mm -hmm. uh, so on the very first day that we met, um, and uh, you'd be then, surprised how many people meet that way. <laughs> 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 well, I, I, uh, and I was not looking for a husband. In fact, uh -huh. I was determined not to get married. I was going to have. A, I thought I had a single vocation, and um, wow. Edmund and I, uh, since that very day, we saw each other every single day mm -hmm. after that, mm -hmm. and. Uh, Eventually, we did get married, mm -hmm. but you know it's kind of interesting that w without wanting to find a husband, I was not husband shopping. I was not trying to put myself in a situation where I would meet guys and date them and get married. But what cemented our marriage ultimately was that we were brought together by a, a, a common vision mm -hmm. of life mm -hmm. and and we did something difficult together right something that cost us both something where we would we, we sacrificed ourselves beyond our our our, our own uh, pleasures or our, our own immediate needs yeah. and and that's been pretty much our marriage i mean edmund uh even now is uh uh Sidewalk councils every week at um, clinics in Detroit. So you can imagine what we're talking about. I mean, mm -hmm. Detroit, right? It's, it's, it's uh, poverty uh, times 10. And um, some of the most needy, broken women uh, coming to these clinics to get abortions. And he's out there with his group, Guadalupe Partners. And Edmund and I, that was the other thing. Even before we got married, Edmund and I got arrested a couple more times. <laughs> um, and uh, one time was during a sidewalk counseling episode because we decided we had a little chutzpah and we decided to we we went into the abortion clinic to to talk to a girl mm. because when she, we talked to her at the down on the street we just had a sense that she was tender mm. and we needed to we just thought we needed to talk to her yeah. um, more and so we went up up the elevator to the abortion so we got arrested oh. again but this is even before we were married so we were doing pro-life work uh, together and and very difficult pro-life work mm -hmm. I mean getting arrested going to court together right. and then uh, together we participated in the retrieval of aborted babies from trash dumpsters um, at an abortion clinic in Chicago and then at the uh, 
the Vital Med Pathology Lab in Northbrook, Illinois. And that, would have, that was 1987, 1988. So, I mean, this was the most intense spiritually, emotionally, even physically, mm. a kind of pro-life work you could ever imagine. Mm -hmm. And Edmund and I taught ourselves how to do the photography. We were total amateurs. We rented the, the, the cameras. It was, it was exper experimental. Yeah. You know, try, try this F-stop, mm -hmm. okay? You know, people mm -hmm. know about the old cameras, mm -hmm. right? This is not digital. This is, this yeah. is 35 millimeter film <laughs> we're talking about and try, teaching ourselves how to take the photos so that we would preserve the truth about the, uh, the, these babies, mm -hmm. that their humanity is evident and um, their so lives you, you would not be lost. Pictures yeah, we took of the photos the of the aborted babies, babies mm -hmm. in our apartments. Mm -hmm. You're yes. listening to Dr. Monica Miliorino Miller, and we want you to join the show. Any question you have, this is a, a real caretaker of the history of the pro-life movement, one who actively lives uh, the pro-life message, give us a call, 205-271-2980 or 800-221-9460. Email us, jimandjoy at ewtn.com. Maybe you have a story you want to tell. You've got a question, a hurt, a wound, a healing. Maybe you're involved with 40 Days for Life. We're here for you. It's amazing courting experience yes. with you. And I, but it, it, it's so... You, you're right, you're so right that you were bound together with this, what the church now tells us, self-donation, giving of oneself to God, giving oneself to each other. And it's very clear, if you want to marry me, we want to marry one another. We're about the Lordship of Jesus, and we really will do anything that he calls us to do. This is the kind of person I am. Well, you knew yeah, that you got... Right. Tell us about, you know, as you went on, you continued to to rescue you yes, were, yeah. and, and, and we were we were involved very early on in, in the rescue movement um, for whatever reason I you know I, I am an activist pro-life leader right. I mean there's probably some reason my personality and the people that you meet early on when you're being mentored right. are going to have an influence on the direction that you take like Joseph Scheidler right. mm -hmm. uh, of the pro-life action league um, I owe that man a, a, a huge huge debt I do too um, yeah. mm -hmm. but you know, as an activist pro-life leader, you are involved in doing something about an injustice where you want to have at least, a, a be, you know, you want to work and you are working toward the, um, the elimination of this injustice. Right. So what, mm -hmm. what do we want? We want unborn, unborn children to be welcomed and to be protected by law. Right. Um, we're not there yet. Mm -hmm. That's not happening uh, right, right this very second. So we want, but, but in the meantime, an activist tries to confront the injustice immediately and makes an issue out of it now and focuses uh, attention on the injustice and, and tries to reap some, fr some real fruit. Right. There are babies who are dying now, this very moment Being, while I'm talking. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's and right. somebody has to be there to advocate for them, to reach out to the moms, to draw attention to the injustices of the abortion industry per se. Um, and that was what we do with the sidewalk counseling, with, with uh, the re, you know, uh, doing uh, the retrievals of these unborn children, burying them, the rescues, the court. Which, well, you know, going to court and going to jail, by the way, provides a huge witness. I mean, not, not just the fact that we get a lot of media attention. Yeah. It keeps, keeps the abortion issue alive on the front pages of the paper. Mm -hmm. um, and before the people. And before the people, mm -hmm. exactly. So, mm -hmm. you know, the pickets, the demonstrations, right. uh, keep, keeping the issue of abortion alive in the, in the public forum. Uh, when, when you're living in a culture that, you know, as our Pope, uh, Holy Father said, the throwaway culture, right. we have to show why that is wrong and, and not be apathetic uh, about it while, while the injustice is, is right here, right now, taking place this very moment. So it's a, it's a reaction to the urgency and to the immediacy of the injustice. Um, yeah, and we do have uh, an event coming up uh, October 10th. Tell us. I want to let everybody know mm -hmm. and everybody participate. <laughs> um, so some of your, some of the uh, viewers uh, may have uh, actually participated. Uh, we, we, I'm one of the national organizers of the protest PP, protest Planned Parenthood pickets. Mm -hmm. yes. And the first, uh, this was a national event. I'm literally coast to coast and in six foreign countries mm -hmm. The first one was August 22nd, mm -hmm. 
and we had oh, uh, we had just about 80,000, 80,000 yeah, people incredible. all mm -hmm. over the United States, mm -hmm. an absolutely unprecedented number in the history of abortion, came out and picketed Planned Parenthood clinics all on the same day. Mm -hmm. We had hundreds of news stories and photographs, incredible photographs, right, right. in the secular papers. Uh, and again, that extends your witness. Mm -hmm. So it, it's not just the moment that you're there, but then when you attract that media attention and the photo photographs right. of people holding signs, the crowds that are gathered in front of these, the, the Planned Parenthood clinics. So we're gonna be doing that again. And, and we're, we, we are, uh, you know, prompted to do these major protests of Planned Parenthood because of the Center for Medical Progress videos right. that have shown that um, not only are we murdering, killing uh, innocent unborn children in the abortion clinics, but a further a desecration, the further barbarity of harvesting body parts and putting them up for sale, it, it couldn't be worse. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and I think, you know, here I am, somebody who's actually taken yeah. the remains out of the trash, uh, Jim and Joya, and, mm -hmm. I, and I've said to myself, which I have to stop saying, uh, I've seen it all, right? right? I, I've seen it all, yeah. I can't learn anything new. Mm -hmm. um, I have to stop that because when I, when I watched in particular the, the Center for Medical Progress videos numbers three and four. Right. And the, 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 you, know, you were actually taken into the back room mm -hmm. of some of these Planned Parenthood clinics and you see the bodies, freshly aborted babies, mm -hmm. just aborted, mm -hmm. and they're literally uh, scavenging through. Mm -hmm. I said, I, I, I can't believe what I'm looking at. Mm -hmm. how, and how is it that when I see, I see that, and, and the bodies are, you can see the legs, you can see the arms, and it, it's all there, and it, it's human, as absolutely human as it could, these babies could possibly yeah. be, you know, even in these videos. And I say to myself, how is it that I see right. a human being made in the image of, in likeness of God who has suffered a terrible violence, and yet the technicians in, it, it are, uh, all they see are, is a thing. Right. They've re reduced a human being to a thing. So for us to be out in front right. of these pl Planned Parenthood clinics, October 10th, mm -hmm. so keep that in mind, we'll October 10th. We'll, we'll be there, there. I'm speaking. Most of, okay, excellent. <laughs> oh, October 10th, most of the pickets take place at nine in the morning. Mm -hmm. A few are adjusted because there's some schedule issues like ours in Detroit will be at 11 o'clock in the morning because the helpers of God's precious infants are having right. an event with, right. with, our, with our archbiship that, right. that morning, mm -hmm. so I didn't want to interfere. But most of them are at nine o'clock, October 10th, and we hope that we will be able to at least replicate the response that we had back in August. This is not something, well, I did it once, or now I'm on to other things. Why should you be on to other things? Right. When the abortionists are not on to right. other things, the babies are just as dead October 10th as they, they were uh, August 22nd. So we're hoping that we'll have a big turnout. So people want to go and find out, well, where? Right. Okay, yeah. where is one mm -hmm. of these demonstrations taking place in my backyard? Right. Just go to protestpp, those are initials, mm -hmm. protestpp.com. Protest mm -hmm. You click on the locations tab, voila, everything is, is there designated uh, by state. So find your state and the addresses and contact. You can even contact the local leader. Yeah. It's all there for and you. And this right. activity, by the way, is protected activity. Absolutely it's First right. Amendment protected. right. Mm -hmm. We have the right to uh, assemble, and uh, in most cases, the police are very helpful. Yeah, they they're can be there, very they're accommodating. They're to protect yes. you. Yes. Um, so it's not actually a rescue or a sit-in, and uh, it's something that you can go to, your family can go to. And uh, when we held ours in Birmingham, we had about 500 people, and I'd say almost That's half, so almost half of the people though were all new when people. New there people. you go. This right. really right. brought in, infused right. the pro-life movement. So with many new people have seen the videos, yes. as you said, and it's just um, yes. so heartbreaking. So what can I do? This gives this gives something to do because we mm -hmm. don't want to fall into despair. Yes. Right. And so even if our children have heard about these kinds of things, you know what? We're going to go right to this place, we're going to pray. This is where it happens. We're gonna invite these people out to, to repent. We're gonna inform the whole well, community. Well, and we know that some women who were coming for their appointments right. uh, at some of these Planned Parenthoods that happened to be open on a Saturday, mm -hmm. uh, we know that some babies were saved. That's right. So they, there you, that's the biggest fruit you could ever right. have. Right. Well, we have an email. I've heard that it's counterproductive to show graphic images of abortion because it may trigger PTSD, which is post-traumatic stress syndrome or disorder. Ang yeah. disorder or anxiety in women who have had abortions. But I've also heard that America will not end abortion until America sees abortion, which is more correct. 
and this is mm -hmm. from Casey. Well, <clears throat> I definitely have a point of view about this, and as a matter of fact, I've written probably the only in-depth, comprehensive article that covers literally this whole topic from A to Z. Um, graphic which images. Is gra yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and it's on our website, which is ProLifeSociety.com. Um, it was published by, um, originally published by New Oxford Review, a mm -hmm. uh, very popular Catholic journal. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, I am on a crusade that we cannot refer to the images of aborted children as graphic images. We need to drop, right now, mm -hmm. drop that language. Mm -hmm. These are not just graphic images. Right. I they think that first images. of all, they're, mm -hmm. they're images of an abortion victim. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. what they are. Mm -hmm. So we, we, wow. we're adjusting our language That's to good. call them abortion victim mm -hmm. photos. Mm -hmm. Abortion That's victim encounter. photos. Mm -hmm. Because <laughs> they're, they are, that's what they are. Yeah. And not every abortion victim for, and can we use a, sh a shorthand, AVPs. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. You know, if I'm in an email and I'm talking right. to somebody, right. abortion victim photos. Because not every, I mean, even on the cover of my, my book, um, you know, uh, Abandoned, uh, that's, that's a photo of, an, of an, uh, a hand of an aborted baby, but I would not call that a graphic image. Right. It's a disturbing image, right. perhaps. It's but a truthful it's, image. A truthful image, but it's, it's, there's a poignancy mm -hmm. there. That, that photo draws you to the humanity of that baby right. who has a right to speak the truth of the violence that happened to him or her and the beauty of their humanity that was something that the abortion industry was trying to hide. Mm -hmm. I understand, so I truly, I truly understand. So call them abortion victim photos, please. Abortion. Um, uh, and, and not every abortion victim photo is graphic. So there's, there's that right. dimension or that element that we need to keep in mind. I am friends with many, many women who have had abortions. Um, I think, though, that the primary victim is the baby who is unwanted and the baby who right now can be destroyed. And we know that abortion victim photos awaken hearts. Um, I think there, there, you know, again, in my article, is there a time and a place? Yes. They, you know, it's not like every, every time you go out to a, a whatever the, you know, we don't want to be in front of a, a, a grade school, uh, right, or, or a picnic where there's going to be a lot of children or whatever. But, and I think the other thing is, you know, even the Center for Medical Progress videos, especially videos number three and four, is, you know, you want to use the word graphic, yeah. mm -hmm. as graphic mm -hmm. as they could be, but I think sometimes there's no way that you are going to be able to sugarcoat what happens. This is a huge burden and a terrible cross that women carry who have had abortions. And if a photo provokes them to repentance or, or helps them to seek healing, uh, healing mm -hmm. yes. then, then, then that right there, I think that's a fruit. But I think that, that again, I go back to the thing, the baby, the, the abortion tried to deny that this baby actually ever even existed. Mm -hmm. right. And I think the, the unborn child who is a victim of abortion has a right to speak his truth. Yes. And the only way, really, is by the photos. Of, and see, the photo is not just a photo of some something disturbing. The photo of an abortion victim is the photo of a personal someone. This is a true human being mm -hmm. who lived once and, and, and our culture, again, to use our Holy Father's language, literally threw away. Right. This now, it's as, as if this baby now can speak uh, the, 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 uh, the, the reality of his existence as, as hard as it may be. But I don't see how you can have a social justice cause I mean, even when it comes to civil rights, when, you know, to expose the Nazi Holocaust, um, uh, you know, child labor uh, exploitation, uh, human, you know, ch human trafficking. Slavery. Uh, slavery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Images speak the right. truth of that injustice, and they're, they're an essential component of, of, of pro-life work. Okay. Well, yeah. we have Mary on the phone from Florida. Mary, welcome to At Home with Jim and Joy. Your question or your comment for Dr. Monica Miller. Oh, uh, thank you for taking my call. It's a pleasure. Um, uh, my question is, okay, I'm a pro-lifer, and I always have been. I go out to the clinics, and I um, I see all that. I've even last year at the, uh, 40 Days for Life, we had beer cans thrown at us and stuff mm -hmm. with people. They just hate us out here. But the problem is, is how do you approach people without offending them, mm. Be because a lot of people are just 
I wear the little buttons and all that. Some people are offended at me. I was at the hospital the other day, and this uh, um, PA or MD, I don't, I'm not sure what she was, came up and started yelling at me. And I'm like, whoa, okay, what did I do? She goes, what do those stand for? And I said, well, read them. You'll figure it out. So I said, she goes, I'm not going to let I'm not going to trap you no. into, um, trap me into speaking to you because you're wrong. And I'm like that. Then I go and tell my sister, and my sister agrees with that lady. Oh, my. Mm. Thank you so much for your uh, witness and for your question. Well, well first of all, I want to give you every ounce of my encouragement that I can. Um, sometimes to be a witness for the truth is not going to be easy mm -hmm. and it's going to cost you something. Um, I think that you always have to speak the truth in love and uh, to do it in such a way that um, you know, you're inviting people to at least think about uh, your position, to offer them uh, the, f the facts regarding the humanity of the unborn child. Um, and you're not, you're not going to have a con you know, these conversions of those who are even you know, the most angry uh, people are, are certainly not going to happen e immediately. And maybe they aren't are going to happen ever. But um, the truth does need to be spoken. And you just, you, know, you just need to do it with as much love, as much compassion and understanding. Let the other person say what they want to say. Um, I was talking about the Leroy Carhart uh, incident. I, I met him in the airport, the abortionist Abortions. from, yep. you know, and I thought, wait, before, okay, I, I, I gave him my speech because I thought I was only going to have 30-second window. But then when I saw I may have an opportunity to actually walk with him down the concourse at the airport, I says, I got to let him t tell me. Let him tell me why he sees it this way. This is a man who does abortions And it does abortions, yeah, late-term yeah, term. Late okay. abortions. So Leroy what was the Carhartt. conversation? What did you well, you know, I, I says, okay, Leroy, Leroy, Leroy I, you, I want you to tell me your perspective. Talk to me. What is it? Wh why do you see it this way? And then, you know, he went into his thing, which, was, of course, I was totally, no, he didn't say anything and, and new, but, he, you know, he says, uh, I'm helping women. They need abortions. I'm here to help them. And I says, but Leroy, you know, you, don't, you, don't you see that you're, you're killing innocent unborn children, and th that's the way that you're helping them, but you're destroying a life. He says, not, not a person until, until, it's just a fetus, it's not human, not a person until it's born. But the point was, I, and even though I totally disagree with the man, I think, I think I had to let him tell me how he saw it. Mm -hmm. Let him say what he wants mm -hmm. to say, so that I could actually have a real conversation, as quick and as hasty as that was, because we're in an airport, but um, and I knew he was going to, you know, duck out at some point, yeah. but, you know, catch his other flight or whatever it was. But I had an opportunity to give him my book, which I thought, okay, now he's got the full blast, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Good. <laughs> you know, we, right. we're going to extend right. this conversation. And they, maybe that's the other thing, to always have a really good piece of literature mm -hmm. with you. Mm -hmm. Well, here, here's a, here's a pamphlet. Right. Let me, let me share this with you. And right. so then the pamphlet, now there's some space, you know, mm -hmm. between yeah. mm -hmm. you and the person, and they can take it, they can digest it on their own, and, and maybe the pamphlet is, is the way to, 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 uh, to, uh, to make the communication in a way that's not so threatening. Right. Okay, we have Good. Carolyn. Carolyn from Louisiana is on the phone, and welcome to At Home with Jim and Joy. Your question or your comment for Dr. Monica Miller. Well, I'm so glad to have this on, and I, I'm so sad about the fact that I was trying to help someone adopt a child, mm -hmm. and I found out that they're using our tax money to pay for abortions. So how can we go about stopping this? What, what is the best way to start? Well, the, uh, I would say the best, well, first of all, Congress is all in a t you know, focused on the defunding mm -hmm. issue. So uh, I think the moment right now is, is, is very important politically to, uh, to get after your, your, your congressmen and, and, and your state senators and, I mean, and call them up. Right. Uh, and no time to write letters, okay? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can send an email. They'll have an email address on their website but to, uh, to tell them that you want them, whatever legislation comes up to defund Planned Parenthood, you want them to support that legislation. And also your state legislators. Right. Because there are, you know, since these uh, Center for Medical Progress videos have come out, uh, it, there have been even just some state defunding right. mm -hmm. of, of Planned Parenthood. And I say get out on the street. Come mm -hmm. to the picket on October 10th and have defund Planned Parenthood signs. Right. Let the public know that their money is going to fund this place that, first of all, Here's my argument. Even if Planned Parenthood didn't do one single abortion, 
it should be defunded anyway. Why? Because their sexual ethic right. leads to abortion. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It is a, is a laissez-faire sexual ethic, sex for pleasure, sex without commitment, sex without marriage, sex is recreation. Sex for children. Uh, uh, even, mm -hmm. even that. Mm -hmm. And why would anyone want their tax money going to fund an organization that has such a corrupt view right. of human sexuality right. that leads to out-of-wedlock pregnancies and the doorway of the abortion clinic. Mm -hmm. So that c October 10th, come out for the you know the next protest uh, Planned Parenthood uh, demonstrations. And but right now you need to get, really I think get after your uh, your uh, your um, political You're representatives and tell them that's what you want them to do. And make sure <coughs> you're registered to vote. Yeah, and vote. everybody needs to be. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing how many pro-life people are not registered to vote. That so, is so when you call your representative, you want to say. I, I'm a voting person in yeah, your I'm district. Yeah, I'm a registered voter, registered and, voter. And, and I vote right. pro-life, and, mm -hmm. and I want to see that you're doing something to end abortion and defunding of Planned Parenthood, of course. I, I gotta, and, and now that you brought that up, this is not a minor issue. Right. It does matter mm -hmm. who is in office. And, 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 you know, whether they're pro-life or pro-abortion. Because even in the state of Michigan, for example, we have a very motivated uh, attorney general, uh, Bill Schuette. He has helped us close abortion clinics. He has partnered with us. We gave him evidence of illegals, illegal goings on mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. Michigan abortion clinics and he shut those clinics mm -hmm. down. So it, it, he's motivated. So it does yeah. matter who you vote for if you mm -hmm. want to see results and, w and have our culture move uh, to protect unborn children. Okay, we have one more email. How can I talk to my children about abortion in an age-appropriate way? Their ages are 12, 8, and 5, and I'm not sure how to approach the situation. And this is James from New York. Wow, that's an excellent question. Um, the 12-year-old is probably ready to understand that what abortion is. Uh, I mean, and I, I, maybe in some ways I'm, I'm not the perfect person <laughs> to uh, answer this question because as a pro-life <laughs> activist, I'm not, I had my kids on the street holding signs. We did too. Okay? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, at a very, very early age. So they were very uh, initiated into activism early. Um, and, and, and uh, by, by the way, I should say, and they are perfectly well-adjusted. Right, <laughs> okay. yes. right. Um, so it kind of matters how, how the parent responds to it. I think that, the, you know, I don't think it's an urgent thing unless you want to get your kids out on the street yeah. and get them involved with you. But the five-year-old um, or a seven-year-old, you might want to wait a little while mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. you, you know, it's, it's not, a, they don't need to know. Yeah. Um, I think... You know, I, you know, I've been out on the streets with the with the with the abortion victim photos, and um, and there'll be children who will see them. And I think the parent has to say something like this: They have this is what they have to say to their child. They have to say, "Some children get mm -hmm. hurt mm -hmm. before they're born, and those people holding those signs don't want us to forget them." Mm -hmm. You don't have to say that the baby was killed, that there right. was a murder involved, that there was violence. I mean, what do you say to a, a, a child when you're? Uh, we're driving down the street and there's a dead deer. Right. And that's distressing mm -hmm. to, to see a raccoon who's gotten mm -hmm. hit and, mm -hmm. and it's awful to look yeah. at. You mm -hmm. see, and so even in a situation like that, you have to comfort your child that if this was an accident. Nobody meant to, hopefully, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody meant to, you know, uh, let's, let, let's pray for these people. Yeah. You know, let's, let's pray. And, mm -hmm. and that's, to me, that's the way you need and to handle it. And I do think it. early on, even if it's not addressing abortion, I think fetal development, the beauty, fetal, of, yeah, the, the you beauty of the human yes, child, perfect. early Thank are presenting you. that the wonder within the yeah, womb. Yeah, to show them that the, the, the Leonard them. Nelson photos mm -hmm. of the babies, mm -hmm. the intact babies growing in the mom, the right. mother's womb, mm -hmm. to give them a lesson. Start that um, as early as possible. There you go. Right. That's, that's, that's your perfect. foundation. That's mm -hmm. perfect. Yes. Okay, we have Claire on the phone. Claire, welcome to At Home with Jim and Joy. Your question or your comment for Dr. Monica Miller. Claire? Go right ahead. Yeah. You're yeah. on your, your question um, or your comment. I used to go down to the abortion clinic, and I would put as many children, my five children and other children in my SUV, go down and stand there and say the rosary. They would ask me to leave. I wouldn't. They closed down. They moved a few blocks up the street. Mm, yeah. Does picketing really help? 
Mm -hmm. Oh, good. yes. Good, thank you. Here, 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 here's the absolute bottom line. You never fail, never, I'm going to say absolutely mm -hmm. never, you never fail when you are outside of an abortion clinic standing and witnessing to the sanctity of human life. Never a failure. Do we want to shut down these abortion clinics? Yes, but that's, that's here's, the, here's the, the immediate goal, which makes your presence outside of an abortion clinic where unborn children <coughs> are destroyed. Why it's never a failure. Even if you never talk a single woman out of an abortion by your being there, offering help, giving her literature, right. engaging her in conversation, why is it still never a failure? Because you stand there in solidarity with the unwanted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And those babies go to their deaths, but they don't go to their deaths alone. Right. You're there with them. Mm -hmm. And I think when that baby dies, that baby knows you were there, mm -hmm. and God knows you were there, mm -hmm. and it's never, ever a loss. And, and the powerful. important witness of heaven watching you Heaven's watching and the you. saints right. are praying for you and right. make no mistake about it all of hell is watching you but the <laughs> yes. deal is, is if we that abandon our posts right. the devil wins right exactly that, that's what the devil wants you to mm -hmm. be discouraged right so uh, please don't be don't be discouraged your witness there is the most important thing for that unborn child who is unwanted in this life. Mm -hmm. And you were the only one there to, to uh, witness to the sanctity of that baby's life. And the baby will die per, pro probably, but mm -hmm. the baby will not die alone. Right. See, I, you know, I argue in my book, I said the most, what's the plight? What's the real plight of an unborn child scheduled for abortion? The plight of that baby is not that that baby's right to life has been deprived. That's part of it. That's okay. Mm -hmm. That's, of right. course, the deprivation of his right. Mm -hmm. right. But what's the, uh, the essence of, of what's going on? Loneliness. Mm -hmm. the, 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 baby, the baby who is scheduled for an abortion is thrust into a horrific loneliness where the, where the child is, dis, is literally caused to be disconnected mm -hmm. from human communion. Mm -hmm. And when you're at the abortion clinic, you say no to that isolation. You say, I'm here, I'm standing with that baby that nobody else wants, and it is never a That's failure. Right. That's right. That's right. Wonderful. Okay, we have Laura. Laura from Pennsylvania. Welcome to At Home with Jim and Joy, and your question or your comment for Dr. Monica Miller. Thank you so much, Joy. Uh, thank you. And, Doctor, thank you for all your wonderful work that you do. Thank you. Uh, doctor, I'm thinking to the future and our young women especially, uh, just maybe 10 or 12, 13, as they, their hormones begin to kick in. What can we do, and is it the job of our churches and also of our parents at home, to tell these children the horrors of abortion mm -hmm. and how it is definitely murder? And is there a point where the churches should be talking more about chastity? Well, it, 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 it's a similar to a question that we had earlier, um, but with another aspect to it. I think it's a, the problem with abortion, <laughs> so many problems, but the problem with abortion is that, and what makes abortion different from other social justice issues, is that abortion is also connected to human sexuality. Mm -hmm. Abortion is the fruit of a disordered sexual ethic. It feeds off of it. And if you don't fix the disordered sexual ethic, right. ultimately, you won't actually stop abortion. Mm -hmm. And the, the need to teach our children the importance that human, that sex, that sex the conjugal act is for marriage. And, and to instill that, that moral truth into our children uh, from a very early age, mm -hmm. I think, is absolutely important now you know our, our, you know that's not to say that even when you do that they will get other you know become influenced in some other way or there'll be a weak moment with the boyfriend or you know you can't control everything but that's all you can do right. and of course that the church uh, needs uh, to uh, be focused on that in uh, in, in catechism in Catholic schools um, 
I, because as I said, we have to get this right, right. that mm -hmm. sex is sacred. Sex is for marriage. Sex is, a, is for a one flesh unity for the founding of the family and that, and that you want to protect that mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and you know, as you say, save yourself, right? But save yourself for your spouse so that you can give yourself completely mm -hmm. to another and mm -hmm. what is meant by that one flesh unity. Yeah. Um, so the two things are, are, are connected and this is the only, you know, again, we just have to give a good example, yes. mm -hmm. right? And always, and always let uh, people know, of course, uh, you know, that there is mercy and forgiveness and that they can start again. It's not all lost, uh, you know, mm -hmm. once you've, you've committed sin mm -hmm. or whatever, so. And speaking about resources, especially for those in crisis pregnancy, or maybe you've had an abortion and you're in need of healing, go to optionline.org, optionline.org, or call 800-712-HELP, 800-712-HELP, or 800-712-4357. And you can also get Dr. Monica Miller's wonderful book called Abandoned, The Untold Story of the Abortion Wars. She gives the history. She lets you know everything that has happened from the beginning of time, and it's so important. That's item number 3945, EWTNRC.com, or you can call 1-800-854-6316. So, it, or 1-800-854-6316, Abandoned by Dr. Monica Miller. So important. So thank you thank so you. much, This has Dr. been marvelous. Being I hope you'll us. have me back. Yeah, We'd you were wonderful. We'd love to have you back. You held us spellbound today. God yeah. bless you and your great efforts. We're going to take a break at this time, so don't go away. We'll be right back with Father Leonard, uh, so you're not going to want to miss him. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back. Well, right now we have Father Leonard with mm -hmm. us, and we're thrilled to have Father in the house. But first, we're going to go straight to Rome to hear from Joan. Well, greetings from Rome to all of you at home with Jim and Joy. And my word, what an amazing period of days we have just passed with Pope Francis, his visit to Cuba, but especially to the United States. And I say especially to the United States because in so many of his talks in three cities, he focused on the family. And of course, he was there for the eighth world meeting of families, which took place over a period of six days in Philadelphia. The Pope was there for the last two. Now, Saturday night at an amazing vigil, prayer vigil, in the presence of about half a million faithful, the Pope heard stories of marriage, of family life, from six couples around the world, different ages and conditions. They were from Australia, Jordan, Nigeria, the U.S., Argentina, and Ukraine. And you know what? The Pope was so struck by their stories that he put aside his prepared text and he spoke about 20, 25 minutes off the cuff. He said, the family is God's great gift. It is the most beautiful part of God's creation. The family is the channel and reflection of God's own beauty, truth, and goodness. And it's like a factory of hope. Now, he didn't deny that families have conflicts and problems and many, many issues. But he said two things can get us through that, the abiding love within a family and also the light of the resurrection. He ended, he said, God bless you and give you hope. May God give you the strength to go forward and let's protect the family. Now, Sunday at the concluding mass, this was almost a million people. The Pope said this, he urged Christians. He said, we Christians, the Lord's disciples, ask the families of the world to help us. How many of us are here at the celebration? This is itself something prophetic, a kind of a miracle in today's world. Would that we could all be prophets, said Francis. Would that all of us would be open to the miracle of love for the sake of families around the world. Beautiful, wonderful, caring, hopeful words for families. And on that, I turn it back to you at home. 
Thank you so much, mm. Joan. Another wonderful, powerful mm. report from Joan. Yeah. Father, it's so wonderful to have yeah, you back. Good to see you. God have bless you, you both. Yeah. Bless you. Good to see you. I've been doing well, you know, staying busy, and, but doing God's work, having a good time. Fantastic. Good. Yeah. Good. Any thoughts or reflections on the show today or the Holy Father coming to the Americas or what's mm. on your heart, what's on your mind? Oh, I thought uh, Michelle's uh, talk was, uh, was very inspirational, very motivational. You know, it's, uh, it's very inspiring to see somebody out there who is uh, supporting life, who's so determined in this, um, in this mission to uh, protect uh, the unborn. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's great, it's wonderful. Um, very encouraging mm -hmm. as yeah. a priest to see, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and it goes uh, along well with, uh, with, as you were talking about, the Holy Father's message uh, the past week. Mm -hmm. You know, it was very powerful, very uh, beautiful. And I think uh, he hit it right on the dot, you know. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he, he, a lot of, uh, there was a lot of criticism. He says, well, he should have uh, uh, been a little bit more aggressive when uh, speaking about abortion or should have talked about it more. But he got right to the root of the problem. Mm -hmm. And it was broken families. Mm -hmm. You know, he also spoke about um, uh, uh, an imbalance of, of, uh, of too much power for one, you know, uh, um, selfishness and all this. And, and that's, that's really the source of it there. Mm -hmm. um, I like what he said to Congress is about encouraging young people to have families, mm -hmm. you know, that, that, that's where it's at right there. Mm -hmm. um, so, so yeah, it was, it was wonderful. Yeah. It, it just I think uh, Pope Francis mm -hmm. is so, his kind of modus operandi mm -hmm. is the human person, the right. dignity of the person mm -hmm. and encountering them, right. believers, non-believers, whoever they are. Mm -hmm. And I thought Dr. Uh, uh, Monica Miller's mm -hmm. sharing, I, I caught that same sense about yeah. as we deal, abortion ultimately isn't an issue mm -hmm. or about a particular right, right. And, and it is about a right. She's saying, these are people too, these Correct. are persons, we have to encounter mm -hmm. them, and if we would encounter them, mm -hmm. uh, the whole world would be different. We wouldn't be doing what we're doing, yeah. or we'd repent of what we've done. Mm -hmm. And it's this whole way of, of, of looking for the face of Christ right. in the other person mm -hmm. that the Holy Father brings. Right. That Dr. Miller brought to us today, mm -hmm. and I think that's, those are the key things mm -hmm. that I'm taking away from their time. Oh yeah, of course. You know, he he brought up several social issues, um, a lot of them. You know, the uh, of course the unborn, uh, the feeding the poor, immigration, the environment, and all that. And when we really think about it, uh, you know, pride and greed is is at the source of all of this. But um, uh, there, um, you see, what what happens at the end is that who who's the one who's hurt by all this? Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's the unborn, it's mm -hmm. the weak one. Mm -hmm. You know, it goes well with the, with the gospel readings of, uh, of yesterday and mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. You know, the, whoever is, uh, is least among you is the greatest. Mm -hmm. You know, um, he, he welcomes children, mm -hmm. you know. And, and so this is, this is a message for, for all right. of us, you know, to think about the children, to think about the children of this day, uh, those who are born, uh, who, who are living, and, and the unborn, you know, those in the womb, and those of future generations. Father, our time is getting oh away my. from us, but <laughs> we, want, we want the yeah. blessing to come sure, through you. Give sure. us your okay. blessing. Okay, let's, uh, Lord God Almighty, we thank you, Lord, for all you've done in our country this past week. We ask your strength and, and blessings to be on our Holy Father, and we ask for your blessing as well. And Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us today on At Home with Jim and Joy. Keep it on EWTN. God's plans for you are for good and not for evil, to give you a future that's filled with hope. Bye now.